God is good all the time. Today we celebrate the 25th Sunday in ordinary time in the sea. In our today, in our today's reading, uh, the first reading is the, from the book of the prophet Amos. And Amos is known as a prophet of equality, or you would say justice, or equity, equitable justice. And in our today's reading, there is a terrible irony that is pictured in our passage today. You can imagine a picture of worshippers enjoying special music in a cathedral while just outside the needy beg in utter desperation. There is a magnificent church also built by hungry and homeless people. The image calls every congregation of believers, every Christian, every believer in whatever religion to honestly examine ourselves. You see, uh, there is this profiting from the poor and because the poor are socially powerless, it is easy to defraud them. than others. Typically, prices of food in poor sections of our own cities and environs are much higher than in more affluent suburbs. It's true. You get that food prices are very exorbitant in marginalized areas. areas sorry. The rental will be high in a poor settlement, not considering the amount of money or the price, but also the maintenance and the condition of the house. The living condition is not concomitant with the money that is paid. We always oppress the poor. We defraud them by dishonest scales. Because they are ignorant of some few things, we take advantage even of the law. And we exploit the poor even when they come to our offices when they need services. Yet, we are Christians. We are religious. But yet, we do not recognize the need of the poor and their plight. Amos returns to conditions in Israel to indicate that one reason for nation's downfall is the upper classes exploitation of the lower classes. Greedy merchant annoyed that they must stop work wherever there is a religious holiday or holiday. You see, when the rich oppress the poor, there is a gap between the rich and the poor. And that way, we create a scenario where the poor will want to earn to maintain a living. And impoverish, impoverishing people is by the way you treat them. People work for salary. By the time they are getting the next salary, they have nothing, actually they have accumulated debt. That's why Jesus will talk about debts in the gospel. Still exploitation. You ask a poor man to milk for you. You sell hundreds of liters and yet he has no milk at his house. It's not fair. And it is actually... Uh, a 
big it, it's a balance that we do not strike between getting rich and being human because that's what Amos is calling us for for example when we get a big harvest we will stock the maize until when there is hunger so that we can sell the maize at a higher price and extort the poor it's foolishness to some extent because if the poor cannot afford to buy the maize they will die and therefore even the maize that you had kept to sell at a better price will be lost they'll be eaten by rats and other rodents so at the end of the day you exploit the poor and yet an curse for yourself in the second reading Paul talking to Timothy he talks about the government giving freedom of worship and how people should be left to pray and he says hostile leaders curtail the rights of the church to meet study and evangelize Paul urges prayer for all in authority that government might permit free expression of Christian faith. There is difference between God's desire and what will happen. Christ's death provides a basis for the salvation of all men, yet not all men will believe. God desire that we have the best. God desire from the beginning was that we live with him in Eden but his desire does not curtail our freedom we must believe in him and opt for his desire but most of the time we want to put god into our plans rather than put ourselves in god's plan we plan and then we invite god rather than ask god what he wants with our life or rather go in in an accord to God's plan our prayers should be geared towards the conversion of others when we pray for people to be converted and live their waywardness we are doing the will of God but when we judge people and throw them away from the praying community we are against the desire of god god desire is that all should be saved and if our prayers will be for the salvation of some souls therefore we are called to take to account that it is our responsibility to pray for others so that they may convert and follow God. Paul tells men to pray in a proper manner and to remember that the purpose of prayer is to speak to God not to gain an advantage of others. This goes to us as religious leaders. It goes to every Christian. Prayer time is not a condemning moment. Prayer time is not a show of might, religious, or physical or economical. It's a moment to go before God and thank Him for anything or everything. It is not a moment of putting fear or exerting fear in people so that they may behave in a desired manner prayer is not manipulative we should not pray for people so that they will give money or anything we pray for people because we want to take them to god they know their responsibility and therefore they do not need to pay for them to be prayed for 
every Christian know their responsibility in taking care of the church. And therefore, if we go selling blessings and prayers, we are committing the sin of simony. You remember that guy called Simon? The one who was asking for money so that he could give some blessing in the Bible? We commit simony when we sell our prayers. Prayer should be a presentation to God. Prayer is not manipulative. Prayer should, anyone who prays should be disposed to God. Not to what other men will do or what other men will say. But what are you telling God? What are you communicating to God? That's a prayer. It's an elevation of our hearts to join with God's desire. That's why the highest form of prayer is the prayer of union. Where you and God are united. And therefore, the desire of God and doing the desire of God become part and parcel of us. Because we are in union with him. Paul also reminds women that they want to impress people by the way they dress. And he says they should not do so. But they should impress people not by their dress, not by their good looks, not by the way they wear very long dresses, they cover every part of their body, even the head and the eyes, every part. That is not what is impressing. What should impress people is our deeds, good deeds as Christians. And that's why at the end of every Eucharistic celebration, the priest must send us away, actually chase us away from the church. Go. You know, it's not a request to stay. It's a request to move. Go. Go in peace. The mass is ended. Do not stay here. Let people see. Go in peace. To serve others. Our mass is ended. Our deeds to serve is to, 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 to be able to perform some deeds that really show that you are Christian. So let us impress people. Not by the way we give very good prayers. Not by the way we dress, because this has become a concern in church. But Paul is clear. Dressing is immaterial. What is material is the deed. Let us clothe, let us clothe ourselves with good deeds, not by extravagant dressing and scrupulous, spurious. You know, we, we over... We overdo things, even in dressing. And in our today's gospel, the Bible views wealth like other special gifts. It views wealth and money as a resource to be used in serving God and others. The whole parable reminds us that nothing was that nothing we possess is truly ours, but belongs to God. God has entrusted it to us, and we are his oikonomos, stewards, commissioned to use what we have in his service. Because of his basic, because of this basic biblical perspective of material possession, the story of the unjust steward, dishonest steward, is particularly apt and applicable. The idea of commitment to serving God and money is self-contradictory because the two motivate us to make very different choices. For instance, a person who owns a housing occupied 
by the poor might ex experience a conflict between the desire to make a profit from the property and to maintain to maintain it in a decent condition these motives are contradictory that he must choose love one and reject hate or reject the other we can't serve god and money simply because we have to choose between the vastly different causes each calls for money calls for something and uh, serving god calls for the other because when you call you go to serve god that means you're not making profits and let us look at you see this dishonesty that this man is accused of he told people to change their their debts but let us look look at it in our situation if you are employed in a place and you have the capacity to help some few young men from your village to get a job or to get a living a better living from what they are experiencing at home you can you have a chance to improve the lives of people from your place this is exactly what the gospel is saying is that if you get some people from your village from your place from from your home and help them get a better living or earn a better living you are profiting yourself how in case when you retire you will not be able to perform as much as you used to perform when you are employed so by bad luck if you get sick and need a fundraiser and you did not help anybody from the village that means that the people you going to invite to your fundraiser will be poor men who cannot serve you or who cannot help you or rather they will help you in an accord to their poverty that you would have helped alleviate but you did but if you helped them and they are earning a good living when you need a fundraiser they will come with the might that you help them acquire Jesus is only telling us we are supposed to lift each other the good samaritan helped the man to wake up he paid for him every time you lift a person and put them in another level you are doing a service to yourself Amos telling us that we should take care of the poor is that we remove insecurity and when we don't exploit the poor even the little that we have the little wealth that we have is secure because everyone has enough so we have no problem of insecurity we have no problem of social immorality so when we take care of each other we create a better place for us this also calls for us in a time that even pope through the raudato see is calling us not to be selfish to take care of the environment because if we do not take care of the environment we are annihilating ourselves because we are created from the earth the environment we are from the earth if we do not take care of the earth we are destroying the very component that created us as we are kind to others let us also be kind to the environment let us save let us have a saving 
in our deeds than in what we do. May God bless you. And let us pray to God that he may give us a heart that prays for others because we love them and that cares for the poor in a church that teaches people to love each other and to accommodate each other. May God bless you. May God give you a blessed Sunday.